Okay, today we're going to talk about a special alcohol called phenol, and let me write it out. Uh, while it's an alcohol, <clears throat> we treat it a little differently. It's almost as it's, it's, if it's its own functional group. Um, really, it's an arene ring directly attached to our alcohol group here. And the presence of this arene ring really has a great effect on um, the alcohol group with respect to its acidity. Um, we can think about it by comparing phenol to our cyclohexanol, right? Both have some similarities associated with them, but the Ka values of them are very different. The Ka of cyclohexanol is about 1 times 10 to negative 16th, very weak acid, and the Ka of phenol is about 1 times 10 to negative 10th. So there's something special about phenol that makes it about a million times better acid than cyclohexanol. And if you remember from last video, the way we sort of decide um, and make decisions about whether something's a good acid or not is to try to figure out what conjugate base that molecule would form if it did act as an acid. And so here's our phenol. If it acted as an acid, right, a base like water would take the hydrogen. Those two electrons from the bond would jump onto oxygen. We would form a phenoxide. conjugate base plus our conjugate acid here or H plus whatever okay now when we look at the phenoxide uh, compared to sort of uh, the conjugate base that would form from cyclohexanol the obvious difference is that we have this ring right next to the negatively charged oxygen and so a question is, um, can this conjugate base be stabilized? Can that negative charge be stabilized and shared throughout the molecule? Remember, we have two main ways in which to share charges, move electrons around in a molecule. One is through inductive effects, through sigma bonds, and the other is through resonance effects. If we consider inductive effects, the question would be whether this airing ring is maybe electronegative and would be able to pull electrons through this sigma bond from the negatively charged oxygen. And the answer to that is really no, right? If anything, we have more electron density in this airing ring than we do in the cyclohexane ring. Um, so there's no um, obvious reason why this airing ring would be able to pull additional electrons into it through inductive effects. So maybe resonance effects are are what's happening here. And whenever you see double bonds that and lone pairs around, that brings up the idea that maybe there's some resonance structures possible. And so if you look at this, you should be able to draw some resonance structures. And try to pause this video and do it yourself. Try to draw as many resonance structures as possible that you can for this conjugate base. Um, assuming you did that because you're good students, I'm going to show you now um, how to make these resonance structures. Right? This negative charge can be shared with this ring. These lone pairs can come form a double bond between the oxygen and this carbon. That creates a problem. Now this carbon has too many bonds associated with it, and so two of those where one of those bonds is going to have to move out onto one of the carbons here. Okay. Now the result of those two arrows is this resonance structure, right? Now we have a double bond. That oxygen is no longer negative. This bond hasn't changed. This bond hasn't changed. This carbon has now received a lone pair, and it's a carbanion. Okay, this is one possible resonance structure for this phenoxide, 
And you can imagine other ones also. Let's bring that lone pair in to form a bonded pair. Thank you. Sorry. That's usually how we make resonance structures, is bonded pairs turn into lone pairs, or lone pairs turn into bonded pairs. You know, if this formed a bonded pair here, now this carbon would have too many bonds, and so that bond will have to come out and form a lone pair on the other carbon. So here's the result of those arrows. To do this is now our new bond here. This bond has jumped out onto that carbon to form a different carbanion. This bond hasn't really changed. And we can imagine this happening maybe one more time to form yet another resonance structure. Um, here's our things that haven't changed. Okay, this lone pair is now a bonded pair. The bonded pair here has now jumped down onto this carbon to form another resonous structure. Okay, now what this is doing is distributing and delocalizing the negative charge from this phenoxide throughout the molecule, and that's stabilizing. And again, like we mentioned in the last video, if the conjugate base of a potential acid is stable, that means that this is going to be a better acid. And really, this resonance stabilization of the uh, conjugate base is the explanation for why phenol is such a better acid than something similar like cyclohexanol that does not have that resonance stabilization. Now before we end the video, if we look at these four possible resonance structures, you might be able to rank which ones are better, right? And if you look at it, right, how do we rank uh, the stability of resonance structures? Well, we look at charge. Well, all of these have a negative charge, right? Um, we look where that charge is. Here we have a negative charge on the oxygen. All three of these resonance structures have a negative charge on a carbon. We would rather have that negative charge on the electronegative oxygen than on the carbon. And so these four resonance structures are not equal in stability. This one is much more stable. And if you were sort of to look at where the electron density is in this conjugate base, you would find that most of it is on the oxygen, but it is able to be drawn into this ring and sort of dances around, really skips around the ring from this carbon to this carbon to this carbon.